The World of Cyberpunk book has been released, and with it, a ton of official info is now available. We will be going over the history of cyberware, the availability, and why society turned to cyberware in their everyday lives. Cyberware wasn't always what is known as today in cyberpunk. It evolved from medical prosthesis in the beginning of the 21st century and were implants like we use today for replacing missing or damaged limbs or used as artificial heart valves, extremities, or vertebrae. They were just for saving people's lives or at the very least, making a person able to function normally after a huge surgery. But all this started to change after the first Central American War where these implants started turning into the first cyberware the world would see. After this war, thousands of veterans came back with major injuries. The tech progress and miniaturization allowed for the previous medical implants to become medical cyberware that was more sophisticated and widespread. But even though it was more sophisticated, it was still really underdeveloped. The first prosthetic arm was a heavy mechanical arm that had a crude gripper instead of hands and fingers. And these new sophisticated cyberware were very expensive. These would become to be known as Generation Zero, and they're now completely obsolete. After the first Central American War, the prosthesis development began to help speed up the miniaturization process. This led to the first non-medical implants to be designed and used by heavy labor workers and air filters grafted in the upper respiratory tracts for those working in polluted areas. The cyberware developed for these workers were reinforced spines and joints. The only issues the developers were having were that the human body was still rejecting the cyberware at a high rate. And this was the main obstacle stopping cyberware from further enhancing society. And you can guess who the next people were that wanted this technology, the military. Around the second decade of the 21st century, when the second Central American War and the second and third corporate war, cyberware made it to the front lines of the battlefield. Militech was the first corporation to get in on the first of the combat cyberware, creating the first cyber soldiers. These cyber soldiers had increased carry capacity and more importantly, direct connections to personal motion trackers and rangefinders. Militech soldiers proved to be better than the enemies in basically every way. So naturally the other side wanted a part of this, so it would be more of an even fight. And so this began an arms race between the corporations to develop the best combat implants. And this war is still going on to this day. The first combat cyberware is dubbed Generation 1. This cyberware was created with plastic and metal. While these were better than Gen 0, they still are up to par to even the low grade Gen 2. Cyberware would continually be engineered and developed through nothing other than more war. The same corporations that were a part of the corporation wars would now start developing better medical implants for veterans. Not because they wanted the help, but for their profits. Cyberware was barely regulated, so this allowed the corporations to develop cheap models for the industrial marker, and then at the same time for mass population. This was around the same time that cyber weapons would also appear. Because of the war, society was basically at a breaking point. With much of the world destroyed and changed, they needed something to help them through it. And with the invention of the anti-rejection treatment and the kitsch style, an expression of happiness and recovery in a period of relative excess typified by bold colors, bright plastic, and accessibility. Just think of the 70s and this is basically that, but futuristic. But there was one thing that changed society forever in this time. When they were at their lowest point, brain dancing was invented. And cyberware had officially made its mark on mankind. These cyberwares would become generation 2 and the most common on the streets of Night City. They were cheap and functioned very well. They upgraded the rather old style pistons and hydraulics from Gen 1 with artificial cyber muscles. And to make Gen 2 more impressive was the fact that the real skin technology was invented. It was originally for vets to make accepting their cyberware easier, but years after, it would make cyberware a high-end status symbol. Since now it would make your cyberware basically look like a real body part and allow for more customization. And cyberware was not done there by any means. The corporate Cold War's arm race would bring in Gen 3 cybernetics. The corporation saw developing cyberware further to keep their sight secure while keeping their enemies at bay. Gen 3 would be lighter and with the use of more durable carbon fiber and ceramic polymers, less heavy as it replaced the old heavy metals used in Gen 2. Some of these advances saw corpse soldiers and assassins filled with concealed subdermal armor and retractable weapons. Real skin even got an upgrade with bullet, blade, and fireproof armor variants. One last and huge tech that got developed was called Bioware. Bioware was created from the byproduct of the anti-rejection treatment as it was used to integrate implants into the body but it would be upgraded by using artificially grown and enhanced organs and low impact nanotech that created biological enhancements. Such enhancements are skin weave armor, nanosurgeons, toxic binders, and synaptic upgrades. What makes these useful is that while not as strong as their cybernetic counterparts, 
The biomodified muscles and organs are immune to EMP attacks. They're not detectable by regular scanners, and most importantly, are less likely to cause cyberpsychosis, which is when people lose their mind and start killing others when they have too much tech in their bodies. A great example of someone with all this Gen 3 and BioWare tech is none other than Adam Smasher, the Arasaka security cyborg. He is basically all machine and looks to be a force on the battlefield. This shows how far the tech has come throughout the years. But cybernetics wouldn't just be for the corporations in battle. It made its way to all social aspects of life, medicine, family life, sex, and entertainment. It created legal and illegal businesses with brain dancing and cyber fashion and created a black market for cyber limbs and bioengineered organs. There is no turning back for humanity at this point. Gen 3 would not be the last generation of cyberware either. Gen 4 cyberware was created, although it did not pertain to every citizen as Gen 4 was only for the rich and powerful. There are two types of Gen 4 cyberware. The first is for top tier level agents and officials of the corporations. These people install neural processors, net running hackerware, grade 4 cyber eyes, and the most interesting, stress analyzers. Apparently these mods would give them a competitive edge over their rivals. The next type of Gen 4 cyberware was for the people within the social elite. This cyberware didn't really enhance a person on the inside, as most of it was purely cosmetic. They had flowing gold and platinum lines woven into the best real skin. They even had cyber limbs made of pure crystal that was cultivated in orbital stations. Or instead of crystal, they were plated with natural wooden tiles worth thousands of euro dollars. Cyberware changed the entire society of the human race. It allowed for restructuring of the entire human body, and it isn't even that hard to do. People can go buy shelfware, which is cyberware from a retail store. Instead of cell phones and tattoos, Cyberware now dominates that market. Shops and cosmetic clinics can even go offer walk-in procedures for light implants. Kind of like getting your ears pierced. But more complicated cyberware does need a specialist to install. But in Night City, it's basically like going to see the dentist. This makes it so easy for most of society to get cyberware in their bodies. Even if you can't afford an official product, someone can always go to the black market and find a ripper doc to install their cyberware. Although it is cheaper, it does have its issues such as well, being very sketchy. It's easy to see how the people of Cyberpunk Universe became to depend on cyberware. Society was going through a terrible time in the early part of the 21st century. They needed something to enhance their lives from the constant war, and that answer became cyberware. It became more and more developed until it was literally in and around everyone. When is enough enough? We have our technology such as cell phones, PCs, tablets, gaming consoles, and TVs to get through our tough times, like this pandemic we're currently in. Who is to say that we aren't following the same path as a society in the cyberpunk universe? If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, stick around for the videos coming up or in the description below. Don't forget to sub so you don't miss all the upcoming cyberpunk info. And remember, always take it to the edge. It's the cyberpunk way.